If you need to do research on businesses or business people, I'll walk you through the steps of doing an OSINT investigation that can even lead to their signatures on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Open source intelligence tools are a great way to learn about businesses and the people behind them. Now, because businesses generate a lot of paperwork, most of this has migrated online. In order to access it, we can't simply Google it because most of this information is actually contained inside databases. Now, databases require you to actually query them with something, meaning to submit some sort of search term in order for it to return a result. You can't just look inside the entire database because that's not how Google works. Now, while we can find the location of these databases with Google, we'll need to enter in the actual search terms ourselves. And today, I'll walk through a couple of tools that can lead you very quickly to the documents behind a business and even to the person's signature who's responsible for it. Now, some reasons why this might be useful is to understand who your competitor is if you're doing this legitimately, or if you're a hacker, you might want to be crafting the perfect phishing email. Now, to do this, you would need to know the person who's behind the various parts of the business and also be able to replicate their signature and their writing style effectively. And by looking at the documents internally that the business has to provide to the state in order to exist, it's easy to find out who's in charge. Now, the nice thing about this tutorial is the only thing you'll need is a web browser in order to do it. So once you have an internet connection, then we're ready to start. But if you get confused, you can always check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. Today, we're going to play the role of a penetration tester who's going after a company that they have permission to, but wants to find the most important people to go after. Now, a hacker would follow a similar technique by identifying people he could pretend to be in order to maybe send a malicious email or a phishing email to capture passwords or uh, infect someone's computer with malware. Now, our goal today will be to find somebody at our target company that we can send an email to and also have enough context to know that they will probably open it. Now this is harder than it sounds because not everybody is going to open a PDF, especially a business person because they've been warned over and over not to do this. So we will need to find somebody to impersonate or some other plausible reason to get somebody important at this company to open an email. Now because this will expose a little bit of personal information, I'm going to pick our target carefully today and because I'm not allowed to pick Priceline anymore, I'm going to instead pick Equifax, who recently lost nearly every American's personal financial data because of poor cybersecurity and general ignorance as to how they're supposed to keep that data secured. Now to start this out, we're going to go to intelteknics.com, and this is the website of Mike Bazell, who has a lot of fascinating tools that are really powerful for analysts or anybody else who's doing this kind of research. Now once you go to the main website, you can scroll down uh, after clicking on tools and find the business resources section, which is what we'll be working out of today. Now okay, in order to start this search, you're going to have to find the secretary of state where this business would have needed to file their paperwork. Fortunately, there's a workaround because virtually every single business does business in California. And because California's Secretary of State website is pretty easy to search, we're going to begin our search there. So once we get there, we'll click on business and then business search with free images. And we'll type in Equifax. And we can assume they're a corporation because they're a really big company, but if we do another search for uh, LLC, we might see some additional results as well. If they have, for example, multiple business holdings. Now here we can see there are a lot of different results, but nearly all of them are surrendered, except for one, which is active. And we can also see that it is headquartered in Georgia, and it looks like this is the service for process, so we know a little bit more about who does their paperwork. As soon as we open it, we can see there's actually a lot of documentation here, including a very recent 2019 filing that includes information about who the VP and treasurer is. So we already have one potential list to our target. We can see the CEO, the secretary, the chief financial officer. We can also see this address on Peachtree Street in Atlanta, Georgia, which will be a way that we can confirm that a company is linked to this individual uh, company that we're going after. So what I mean by that is there could be other different businesses, especially if this is a large business that have been spun off from it in order to hold assets or do other things like maybe be a foundation for nonprofit 
Uh, and this is something that a lot of businesses will do in order to kind of um, spread their assets around and pay less taxes, but generally the same people will be behind it. And that's something that we'll look into today. Now we can also see in our publicly traded disclosure document here that there is a complete list of all the executive officers and the board members of Equifax, including their compensation and other details that might be something we could slip into a conversation, maybe between coworkers or from the human resources manager saying, hey, we noticed your uh, shares uh, are down by some whatever, I don't know. But either way, we have a little bit more context because we know about in uh, little details about each of these people, including whether they've ever been uh, convicted of fraud or if they have filed for bankruptcy. So we also have the signature of the assistant secretary, which already gives us the ability to email any of these people claiming to be doing paperwork for the state, which is a pretty good start, but I wanna show off some more tools, so let's dig a little bit deeper. Now, of course, we can go back through other publicly traded disclosure documents and see if we find anything else, but once we go back too far, we'll start to notice that, for example, Kathy Harris, uh, Catherine Harris, uh, retired quite some time ago, so this is no longer a valid uh, signature to be sending anyone at Equifax. And if a retired secretary began sending emails to people, I think people uh, at Equifax would be quite concerned. So once we go beyond a certain date, the majority of these aren't really useful anymore. So what else can we do? All right, well, going back to the main page on Intel Techniques, we can click on Open Corporates. And this is a tool I really like because once we type in Equifax, we can find more about the people behind this company almost immediately. Now, what's cool about Open Corporations is it isn't limited to just one Secretary of State website. It searches pretty much all of them. And as you can see, there are 748 companies that have been found under the search. So we'll need to narrow it down a little bit more. First, we'll go ahead and exclude inactive entities because we know we're looking for active businesses and all these old records should go away and we should see that our 748 results goes down to 371. Next, we can narrow it down further by specifying the state in which we know this business is located. In this case, we identified an address in Georgia, so let's narrow it down there. All right, now we're down to 20 companies, and we can see that most of these actually appear to be related to Equifax. So let's open one up here and see if we can find some interesting information about the Equifax company in open corporates. If we don't get the results we're looking for, I also want to point out there's another tool called Corporation Wiki, which I like a lot, where we can do a similar process, run a search, and begin to get information about the people who are behind this company. Now, this tool is pretty interesting because it generates a little map, which by zooming in on, you can see uh, has a really cool ability to click on any of these people and see the various links they have between other uh, companies. So here you can see a lot of these people also work at Equifax Decision Solutions Inc., um, which is probably, if I had to guess, owned by Equifax. So there are a lot of other companies that are tangled up in this web. And if you want to understand better who works for what section of the company and who might be able to be slipped a document to sign that's actually a malicious PDF, then this is a great place to start. Now, going back to uh, our opencorporates.com result, we can see that there are a number of different filings for Equifax, although they aren't that recent. And the most recent one, we can click on view and see that it doesn't even exist on the server anymore. So while this might seem like a little bit of a dead end in terms of the filings, we do have more information about the individuals. And that's where Open Corporates really shines because it allows us to actually go into more in detail about the individuals that are behind this company. Now here we'll go to the page for Lisa Stockard, who uh, we can also go ahead and click on this fantastic integration called Little Sis. And this will search through documents, oops, if there's any available. Um, but this will search through through documents to try to find if she's mentioned in, in any of these documents. And let me pick somebody else who does have some results just so you can see what that looks like. Um, for John J. Kelly, we can see that he's mentioned in a proxy statement for Equifax, um, which already contains some signatures for important people in the Equifax organization uh, and the controlling company that actually owns it. 
So here's all sorts of information about the people who are in control of the company. We have photos, which can lead us to, a, via a reverse Google search, uh, maybe more information about this individual. So I don't even know who this lady is, but if I were to search, I can see um, that she's on the Sandra Day O'Connor Board Excellence Award. So, uh, you know, it's really easy to start expanding our knowledge. This is even a black and white photo, and we were still able to now get a color photo of this lady. And because, you know, we're just trying to track down important people at this company, this makes it really easy for us to take just a fragment of information and match a name to a face. So here, of course, if I want to go through, I can match this lady to her, oh, nope, black and white photo. And we can see this is Siri S. Marshall. Um, even if we didn't have her name here, which I'm sure we do, yep, we do, even just a photo of this person, if we know they're important and work at Equifax, will allow us to track down further details if we uh, do something like a reverse image search. All right, so now I want to set up, let's say I'm, I'm frustrated. I, I really want to get at this, and the information I have, while tentatively okay, isn't a slam dunk for knowing my target's going to open my malware. Let's take a look at other businesses that Equifax owns. And we can see that there's quite a lot of stuff here, including a somewhat recently filed Equ Equifax Foundation, Inc. Now we already know and have been digging after some of these important people, and we can see our friend Lisa is actually the registered agent, and she's one of the directors of this company. So that's pretty interesting. Let's go ahead and click on registry page, and we can see that in the Georgia Corporations Division, this has the exact same address as Equifax. So it looks like uh, this is just another branch of Equifax. If we click on Filing History, then we can get more information about this business and we'll probably see that there's not a lot of uh, documents that have been filed because it's very recently been incorporated. Here we can see there is a single result and when we click on it, we get a PDF that we can open and when we scroll down, we get the information of the people who actually submitted this. Now here, I have correspondence between the person who's registering. This is the exact lady's email address at Equifax, so I could send this uh, an email right now. And then the email address of her lawyer who files the paperwork for the state. So if I need to send this person an email and I want them to open it, I could probably just send them a version of this document and say there's a problem and that they need to fix it especially if I pick an email that's so close to this one that they wouldn't really be able to know. So the point of this is when I check out what this uh, service provider is, we can see that this uh, is a lawyer's office who provides corporate and, and finance assistance for you know LLC filings, in this case, a nonprofit. We know that this is a outsider who's been assigned a certain level of trust with this business. So if we wanted to go after them as a penetration tester and we really wanted to send a convincing phishing email, we now have everything we need to target somebody specific and high level at this company, Equifax, with an email from someone that they are expecting to download and open a PDF from, which is a lot more than we started out with. The amount of information you can find on businesses and business people with open source intelligence research is pretty astounding. With this information, you can go on to both better defend your business by realizing what's out there, or to attack it if you're a penetration tester by knowing exactly who's in charge and what their signature looks like. If you had any problems with this tutorial, you can always check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. And if you have any ideas for future episodes, you can send me a message on Twitter, because I'd love to hear from you. That's all we have, and we'll see you next time.